This is my version of a diagram done by retired military master gunner Corey Corey Fish. He goes by. He was on Globebuster Sunday doing an explanation of his military survey style using parallel lines, lines of parallel, he calls them. Um, I wanted to, I added an extra little bit to try and explain it a little bit. Um, then I put three separate suns, but them suns represent one giant heliocentric sun, you know, 864,000 miles across and 93 million miles away. The lines, the sun rays are supposed to be coming in at 90 degrees parallel. So you see the two zero lines, they're both parallel and the two 45s. Now his survey is, is done between the two 45s. And uh, I added the zero to give perspective. So I have a, a man, little stick man down at the bottom with his head facing the sun, the half sun you see. So if the, if the globe is correct, he can maintain that angle as soon as the sun crosses his path three hours later it should be 45 degrees and then another three hours later at 90 degrees well if you make three more 90 degree angles then you've come around full circle so his survey station is at the bottom left and he picks a point 3113 miles away with the sun directly overhead and he assumes that angle to that to where the sun's at at a 45 degree angle so when the sun crosses his point it's supposed to three hours later it should be 45 degrees if it goes past 46 degrees then it's in geometric basically breakdown it's a geometric possibility on a globe with a sun 93 million miles away now he said to have done this observation and it went past 46 degrees like over 50 times out of 70 or 80 times and uh i'd like to do this observation myself but um i think that i you know I, I trust him and i think that we have some practical demonstrations we can give that kind of relate to this so you see the the triangle calculator with a sun 93 million miles away to move one degree you move 160 million miles so that shows that on a globe we would we would maintain the angle to the sun and this is what they show us and this is not the scale which makes it even worse for their argument with the sun even further away um, the rays would be coming in 90 degrees but they try to use um, reflections off the bottom of clouds as globe proof and you see here you have a sun well above the horizon and the bottom of the cloud lit up they use that as globe proof but the devil's in the detail as usual that is a geometric impossibility for a sun to be hitting the bottom of them clouds and we see it all the time because that sun is supposed to be coming in parallel they use that for the eratosthenes proof of their radius the eratosthenes experiment they say 500 miles away, the rays are parallel. But here, within one mile, it breaks down. So let's hear what they have to say. Notice that the sun is setting in the west, and the high altitude clouds are lit up orange. But the lower clouds are dark gray. They're not in direct sunlight. What's this tell us? It tells us the surface of the earth is curved and the sun is going below the horizon and shining upward onto those clouds, but leaving the lower ones in darkness. Now, I no idea. The argument is that the clouds are above the mountain and that the rays from the sun are coming from below the clouds, casting the shadow on the bottom of the clouds. Period. And this proves that the sun is always above the mountain peaks. Now, on a flat earth, as the sun gets further from you, it lowers. So that's how the period. 
and this proves that the sun is always above the mountain peaks. Now, on a phone, what is your perspective that you're referring to? I know what you're referring to. You're referring to a perspective far away from the mountain, miles, many miles, and on the ground, like where they got these pictures from. That's what you're referring to. Your perspective is everything. Where's your perspective? Okay, so the perspective far away from the mountain looks kind of like that. So you have the sun on the horizon and the, the light's working its way up to the top of the mountain. But it's still shining a shadow down on the top of the clouds. Notice that all the, the examples they gave, you couldn't see the peak. That's because the peak is coming up through the clouds. But even if it wasn't, okay, they tried saying that them, the couple of views were, were side-on views. But you could tell... That the, they were slightly moving toward the viewer because they were spreading out. You see the shadow if you're looking at it from the perspective of the mountain, standing on the mountain, you see it going off to a point in the distance. But if you're off in the distance, you see that same shadow starting at a point and spreading out as it works its way to you. But it, it's a geometric impossibility for that sun to be hidden the shadow to hit the bottom of the clouds and uh here's this demonstration again i can't i can't stress this enough that sun is well above the horizon now they want to try and say you know the sun's under the horizon lighting up the bottom of the clouds but we see air we see the sun underneath the clouds from airplanes where it's daylight underneath and um they can't use refraction with because that sun was well above the horizon we're looking at it and um it just kills me they try and use that as globe proof when it, it's a globe destroyer a hundred percent globe destroyer because in reality we have a sun that shows up different for every single person not because of the distance if it was strictly due to the distance we wouldn't get shadows at the bottom of clouds and on the top of clouds okay we wouldn't get diverging sun rays you know which um that's what we what we witness in nature but so any anytime they try to bring up uh sunlight reflecting or shadows on the bottom of clouds and you remind them that them light rays are supposed to be coming in 90 degrees and it's an impossibility not to mention the clouds you lit up are always in, out in front of you, which means they should be pointing, uh, even no matter how slight, they should still be pointing down and away from you a little bit, nosing down toward the sun, which makes it even worse. Now, their globe has one degree of curvature for 69 miles, but uh, they claim all this upward shadows and, and light, upward light. And there's another one with a perspective little suns drew at the bottom. But see the, sh the sun shine on the bottom of clouds. Geometric impossibility once again. But um, also, you can look at, off in the distance and see just local clouds lit up. Not the clouds in the distance, just, just local clouds in the vicinity of the sun and the moon. But uh, so yeah, I wanted to uh, kind of tie that into these sun angles. And give a shout out to Master Gunner, Corey, because uh, I think he's on to something. I think we need to talk about it.